Our second year of operation, we bought a water wheel transplanter. It's on a three-point hitch. A tractor would pull it. It's basically a big water tank with hoses, and you have these wheels with spikes on them. Under each of the spikes, there's a hole, so the water can come out of the hole. These spikes will poke into the ground, either in plastic or in bare ground. And as it pokes in the ground, the water shoots into the wheel and fills those holes that the spikes create in the ground. And then behind, there are seats. And so you have people sitting back there with flats, plug flats of transplants, pushing them into those watery, muddy holes. We use the transplanter on bare ground and black plastic. The only difference with black plastic is you don't have to worry quite so much about in-row spacing because you're never going to cultivate it. We have three wheels, and so you can either set up three wheels, which would mean you'd be planting three rows of transplants on a single bed, or you can have two rows. There's lots of variations. And then in the actual wheel, the spikes snap on and off which is a great improvement. It used to be you had to buy the exact wheel for the spacing that you needed, and it was just much more expensive and limiting. When we fill the transplanter with water, tank is 100 gallons or 90 gallons. I think we put a quart of fish emulsion. It's called Neptune's Harvest. And that's just for a little extra oomph of nitrogen, right, as the plants are going in. The advantages of the water wheel, besides any kind of labor saving, back saving, are that you get water on your transplants immediately. If you don't use the water wheel, either you have to plant right when you know it's going to rain soon and you for sure know it's not going to be a drought for a week, um, or you're going to have to set up irrigation, bam, right away to tra save your transplants. And we've definitely planted a whole, you know, eight beds of something and the next day it's gone because it wasn't wet and it shriveled. It happens, and whereas with the water wheel, it basically doesn't happen. I think that's the number one advantage of the water wheel is this, you know if you plant something, you're that much more guaranteed that it's gonna work. The other advantage is your crew is much happier. I think a crew can get more done with the transplanter because they're happy <laughs> and because they're comfortable so they can keep doing it for longer. Our number one goal anyway is to get really healthy transplants, so we want to make sure that they really take their time and make sure that they're well planted. If you're really trying to bust it out, what might be more efficient labor-wise is to have the driver go through, mark all the holes, get the water in all the holes. He could do that really fast. Park the tractor, and then everyone could come back and hand transplant. And that's actually probably faster. So there's a couple of crops that we still do transplant by hand. One of those is strawberries. They have a really big root system that needs to be placed fairly precisely in the soil, and it takes a bit of time to plant each strawberry transplant. So it doesn't make any sense to do it with the transplanter. You know, some things are a call of whether you should hand transplant it or use a water wheel. In our case, one of those is onions. We grow onion transplants. They're just kind of so small when you're first transplanting them that it's like transplanting a hair <laughs> into a puddle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's hard to do a really good job with the water wheel. So in that case, most of the time, we will just mark the bed, get the water in the holes, and then go through and hand plant the onions or leeks.